Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to the American Qualifiers for the Summit 5. We're in Phase 1, Friendship, Dedication, Love, Facing Off Against Elite Wolves. I'm Lyrical Loda, joined today by Mop Pack. Sir, we're seeing a little bit of a change up this time around. It's going to be FDL daring Elite Wolves to take the tinker as they take the doom for themselves. How are you feeling and what are you expecting to see this time around? Just glad they actually picked doom. How did this hero get ignored through the first phase last time? This hero is just... Oh, you want to fight 4v5 for, you know, the entire game once he's level 6? Well, too bad, you have to, because it's a doom. Like, it's great. Great hero. Thumbs up. Very good against the likes of Tinkers and Bokers, those guys that can really just take over a game. I, I know, and ideally, Van and of course, would be just a little bit uh, too slippery to get doom. But in response, they've lost their Beastmaster. They're going to have to go a different route. Possibly the Enchanter, still a decent 4 roll hero. You'd have to imagine it might get banned out in the second phase, just being kind of fresh on the mind if that's what you're looking at. It is a Radiant side where you can take a little bit better advantage of it. And we saw just how great Masoku was at putting on that early pressure. Yeah, he did a great job of it. And this time around, might be running the line. Not sure if he's going to try and do that, or potentially they're playing this as a position 5 lion, um, which they did last time around. I, I will say that as I'm, I was, I was, you know, I, I'm, I'm doing double do today. I'm admin and I'm also a caster. I'm also production. But one of the things that I noticed that I don't always uh, keep my closest eye on is that Elite Wolves, one of the few teams that prefer the Radiant side, and I think this harkens back again to how much they they really want to put into Van and allow him to be the person that runs their game. That if you're running a Radiant side draft, the reason that you take that is because of how much easier it is to play a radiant side mid versus the dire side it's not super significant but it, it's important um and it's a little bit harder to gank the radiant side so i think that this is uh indicative of maybe how elite wolves want to play the rest of this is they're going to take the lion and the axe for themselves yeah that makes sense uh, some teams are currently preferring the dire side when they want that like greedy four roll in the jungle it's really nice when you're going for something like this doom that could be in the four could be in the three you're not quite uh, sure where he's going to wind up and uh, generally, it's a little bit harder to punish that coming out from the Radiant side uh, when you're running it over there. So the uh, I think we had the first series today, the same thing happened where both teams, one team preferred second pick and the other team preferred Dire. So it just went the same way both games. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, game three, though. We're mm. here, man. We've done it. I, the other one ended up only going to two games, but this time around we're going to be going the distance and still with one more best of three to go. I'll, I'll do a quick little plug while we've got people that are, are tuning in a little bit later on today. The last one that we're going to be uh, seeing is going to be Enemy GG facing off against Freedom, and that one is set to start in 50 minutes from right now. So we'll see if it starts on time or if we're going to be pushing that series a little bit later. But no surprise to anybody, FTL ban out that tinker, and we're also not going to be seeing the Alchemist. Yeah, the uh, the only guy left now would be that lone druid potentially. Someone who's a little bit harder to deal with. Trying to sneak him into one of your drafts. The smash axe though, haven't really commented on that one. That's gonna be exciting. I, at least typically that's his hero in a lot of situations. I'm not sure if that's what uh, it'll be doing this time. If he goes like off lane with it, he's running it in a couple different lanes in the past. You never really know if they end up with something like a DK. We could of course end up seeing it mid. Uh, that might be what. I would ban out here, actually, if I'm Elite Wolves, because I feel like CC's been having kind of a rough first two games. Things not going uh, mega ideally for him in either case. Like, first game, it was okay on the Timber Saw, but he didn't, like, totally dominate his lane or anything. But I'd like to see him on just a more stable hero with something he's been playing a ton lately and try and give a little bit more direction to the team. Hmm. Yeah, I could see that being good. Um, they're also running... They, they didn't disconnect, did they? They're running pretty low on their uh, on their reserve time for their fourth band. Uh, really taking a, a lot to secure this. What do you think it is that they're sort of worried about at this point? Talk or DK, I think. Yeah. That would be my guess. Trying to decide which one they think is going to pair up better with the Doom and what they're worried about with the Axe. Hmm. Well, they do end, uh, end up taking the puck out of the pool. Well, Pax, how do you know so much? You're such an intelligent dude. Jeez. What can I say? Yeah, Valve, if you're listening, <laughs> just uh, I know you guys are really out for new blood. So there you go. Give me a call. Give me a shout. Anyone mm. wants to make some Reddit threads, some That's tweets, I don't care. Whatever platform you oh, guys talk about Dota on, that would be great. Are we, we still selling out, right? The yeah, sure. The frog, he, the frog, he's on there. He's there. Yes, that would be great, actually. <laughs> you guys know Chinese. That would be like 
top shelf stuff right there. So I'm Native American, so send out some smoke signals <laughs> wherever you are, and you know, just below them in the general dura- uh, general direction of of Seattle. Uh, yeah. Hopefully that'll work. It'll, that should be fine. Stuff. They might get confused though. A lot of those legalization states up over there. A lot of smoke. <laughs> That's true. Floating up around. Mixed signals there. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely don't want to don't want to cause any confusion. Well, they are going to end up taking the slark out of the pool, and that goes back for now. The nature's profit. So interesting. Um, we were thinking that this was going to be a smash axe. It looks like they might have uh, taken a, a, a little bit of a page out of FDL's book and want to run it in the jungle. And it's certainly looking that way. A little bit greedy. Just kind of like, all right, well, if you guys want to try and go greedy with your doom, perhaps, then we'll just do the same thing with the axe. Saw how effective it was, man. Jeez. I believe the speed run axe, too, was also done on radiant side, so that mean, leads me to believe it must be the faster side for doing it. Okay. Um, trying to stack. Like, generally, you want to be, like, farming one camp, stacking the other, coming back, doing that, suiciding. Once you're at the uh, your first threshold and you're too low, then you just come back in, get your boots. It's nice, man. It's a nice little thing, and there we go once again. So CC will be back on the timber saw. I mean, it won them game one, so why not head right back to it? Can they make the same space for the like? That was a kind of a crazy game, right? Like we wound up with this radiance somehow turning the game around, some bad dives perhaps from elite wolves, and out of nowhere with some really good pushes from the beastmaster and his prophet, they made the space for him to get the bloodstone. Right. So yeah, I'm not sure. It, well, and the other thing was that that was against a Dragonite in the mid lane, and this isn't necessarily going to be a Van Axe mid. They don't have to run it that way if they don't want to. And instead, yeah, they're going to be going for the DP. I think this is a great answer. Although, that being said, they don't necessarily have to run the Timber Saw in the mid lane either. Um, this could be the double bluff now, and possibly going to end up seeing them go back for a, a different mid hero themselves. But I'm not sure, with Puck already out of the pool, what that ends up being that's so great against DP. I mean, DP is just amazing in general. Yeah. Hmm. You probably won't get any last hits as a Timber Saw against a Death Prophet, I feel like. Uh, you'd have to commit more levels into Chain. Hmm. You wouldn't be able to use as much Whirling Death to farm. Kind of a tough call. I'd like to see just a different mid, I think. Hmm. Yeah, I, I would kind of agree with that. And the other thing is that if you do play Timber Saw in that offlane role, maybe you end up being able to roam in and mess with what we're expecting now to be this uh, Axe jungle. I wonder if... Hmm. Oh, they're taking their time. Listen. They're, they're not sure either. They don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> they are... Uh, there's a lot of, I mean, again, keep in mind, this is single elimination, and both of these teams, they stand a decent shot at being able to move on into the, the phase two here, where the, the winner of this entire first round is going to end up moving on into the uh, upper bracket. So they're going to go for the DK. God, I don't know. This is really bold to do that. I'm not sure if they're really going to be able to to get away with a ton. Like, you remember our first series to, of the day? Like, how difficult that, that was uh, for Veggies going up against Infamous? Yeah, it's just like it seems so needed. Like you have to have someone more tanky. Someone Timbersaw needs that early start. Like we talked about time and again, as he keeps getting picked. So it's just there's no way you can set him up against that uh, Timbersaw. And I'm guessing a Lycan ban here, probably right. Hmm. Just saw him come out. You've got a Nature's Prophet as well as a Death Prophet. Is that there's no other prophets in the game, rather? They can pick that up too, I suppose. An Oracle. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> It's good, All right? right, position one. I guess it could be the position one axe into the oracle. All right, sounds good. It's the long con. Honestly, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world with the DP. Like you get the false promise and the the DP going together. Maybe it would be the worst thing in the world. They'd have to end the game really quickly. Uh, and also, the like Fate's Edict doesn't do anything against Timber Saw. It doesn't work that great against Witch Doctor. Yeah, they're not going to pick Oracle. We could dare to dream though. And uh, now you think. Can, are we going greedy? Is this our four world doom? Uh, we're looking at. Uh, it should be a while for the Death Prophet to really come in line. Axe is going to come up into that top lane early on to try and cut the waves and do his own thing. Mm. And you're going to have a Witch Doctor, and what hero do you want? Jara would have been great. Pretty standard hero for trying to fight off that kind of uh, like early aggression into your lane. Life Sealer already banned out, so Visa can't run onto that. Tough calls here. I mean, the other thing to keep in mind is that this is the lineup that, from Elite Wolves that looks like it wants to push really quickly, and Timbersaw is pretty great against that. The other heroes aren't the best at being able to wave clear, which is something that I'd be concerned about, um, but Timbersaw should be able to hold towers somewhat effectively. Neck 
Wow. <laughs> All right, this is survivable core, I suppose. Oh my oh, god. Oh wow. Whew. Okay, so it is going to be the position one acts excellent. Not going to be handing out to smash though. No, oh, too bad. I, I was Van myself to smash MP. Acts. Interesting. Oh, oh so, that A is scary. Yeah, that is that's pretty great against the Necro, against the Witch Doctor, the Doom, the Timber Saw, even the Dragonite. All of them wrote, like there. There's so much about healing and regen. God, if if Ancient Apparition hits some of these ultis, Masuko, are you going to be able to win this them the game? That's that's really what we got to keep our eyes on here. That was a great pick. Yeah, it isn't. We've heard like he was kind of the talk of. The uh, the panel I would say at Epicenter, right? We always had these uh, armlet heroes coming out, be it Alchemist or Life Stealer or Dragonite, and everyone's like, "Where's the ancient apparition at?" He, he destroys the region of Alchemist. He destroys those low armor heroes trying to do or low <laughs> low HP armlet heroes trying to do their thing. And so, uh, like, think... the problem is, like, if you don't hit the ulti, it's just. Well, you lose. And I think that this is the way that Elite Wolves are going to play it, and I think it's the way that you have to play the Ancient Apparition now, because everybody moves around so much, and there's so much that's built into sort of rotating supports, I think you have to go aggro with this. And I think that Elite Wolves are going to go aggressive tri-lane and put Nature's Prophet down in the bottom lane, and just try and, and pressure out as quickly as they can this Necrophos. And Necrophos, while he can be somewhat strong in lane, those first couple levels... They can be a little bit rough, so I I think that Elos are gonna go aggro try and then just have their the um, ancient apparition with chilling touch and you know have lion and him just hit away at these supports with a doom in the as the position four. I think they could punish this. Yeah, it's uh, I, I guess so. Like you don't really want to be rotating over his fronds, right? So I kind of like it. I kind of like it. We'll see. Uh... I mean, Axe has to go up there. You want to be pressuring that tower. It's the Necrophos, the early levels. You don't get that much heal. Lion AA. Uh, I like what you're putting out here. We'll see if they're going to like what, what, we're, uh, what we're putting out here as well and if they're going to do it themselves. Well, it will goes down bottom, so never mind. Maybe not. Maybe they're going to go over there. <laughs> Who knows? It's the double bluff. Um, well, we tried. <laughs> Once they see where the lanes actually wind up, I mean, we saw them smoke up at the tower and run top last time, so I'm not holding anything out at this, you know, at this rate. <laughs> they might point. be expecting like an early smoke or something too. They're staying uh, really grouped up together here just to make sure they don't run into trouble. Oh, look at that line! Look at that axe line! See, oh they're gone. <laughs> they're doing it. They've had enough. Do they have a smoke? They do. All right, we'll see now. Um, I mean, Nature's Prophet is hanging out over here in the the fountain, so it looks like for the moment they're going to be sending these up here and. Franz, easy CS. Yeah, I guess that they just want to secure the rune and then they'll head up that way possibly, or they'll just stay down bottom. Um, yeah, the rotation might come. Like, there's no point really going up that early, Zebo. Uh, ideally, you want a couple levels. Like we saw, it was level five when they first made the axe rotation down from FDL last time. You saw how effective that was on the creep wave. You could just sit there, tank it, a little bit of regen, and you're still fine. Some leftover tangos from the jungle, and tower's dead. So I think around that point we might see that uh, rotation come out if it's going to. But smoking up mid, they're gonna try a little wrap here. Oh, they're going. They wanna. They wanna party. And M God is gonna reveal his way, and they're gonna end up going for the spike. It's only gonna connect actually onto one, but still a lot of damage coming out. That's gonna end up being a dead witch stalker. First blood going their way. M God is gonna be controlled for the moment. They also have the breathe fire. They've been able to do a lot of damage here to the necro, but an early point in that death pulse. This might be enough to dissuade them from going any further forward as. It looks like, for the moment at least, they're going to be able to chase them away. But yeah, down bottom, it's going to be Axe and Lion who are maybe... I, I guess that they try and just maybe stack up the jungle here and uh, secure a, an early Blink Dagger for Axe. Yeah, his Blink is going to be mega important this game. He might... I don't know. It depends how you want to play it, right? Like, some Axe players here, they would go for the Vanguard, and then they're just going to sit down here and farm the whole time and try and bully out the Timbersaw. Like... And that does tend to work a little bit better against certain other offlaners comparatively, though. Like, you know, you can't just uh, right-click trade full-time with a timber. He's just going to chain away, right? Yeah. And uh, the other way to play it would just be go for that early blink dagger. You tranquils, go top, take care of that tower, open up the map a little bit, start getting some deep rewards, and move together with your line, your AA, and your nature's profit, which I kind of like. Is you can see they're already setting up mid here. 
Yeah, he TP'd in there behind. Is. They're going to be able to go. find this. Like, he, he doesn't actually have Sprout or anything, but a quick and easy pickoff. Nature's Prophet rotating early. <clears throat> All right. I like this. I like this. Um, one thing about AA, most of the games we've seen it picked, it was with the Beastmaster for the majority of times because people were relying on that roar just because you needed something where you could hold them in place and guarantee that you hit the ult because if you don't hit it, you lose. But we haven't seen, at least I haven't, didn't see many Axe games. So it'll start with two seconds stun, not the best. Um, once we're up into like the full levels of Berserker's Call, it should be fairly easy to guarantee the Ice Blast. But early on, you're probably going to need both the Axe and the Lion, like syncing up their stuns if you're going to be setting up something here with Masoku. Looks like Doom there also ended up uh, buying out right before he died, but it was pretty close. Yeah, I'm curious how this is going to go as far as setting up stuns and, and all that other stuff goes, because they really are relying upon that AA blast early. Do you think that he tries, I mean, you're seeing him already go over to the side here and he was able to get a couple of pulls off. Is this going to be position five line basically, or uh, are we going to end up seeing like a, an AA Midas? Uh, I would say probably not. I'm going to guess, hmm. it, it kind of depends on the fights. If suddenly you like have a, start, a good opener, you take some towers, win some fights, you get in close to like the recipe, then it comes out, but other than that, we've seen a couple like four staffs into like late game Magnum Scepter if the game goes that long. I feel like the blink on the line is just so core up against this uh, DK if you can burst him down before the ulti, or especially the Timber Saw 2 and setting up for the axe. As Bronze makes this very early rotation. Wow, man, those are some early Tranquil Boots. Yeah, you got those pretty quick, and I guess just using that jungle to the maximum effectiveness. It's worth noting, though, that you still do have Axe that's down here and just causing trouble for the Timber already. Timber did have to go into that Iron Talon, so jungling away with that. In the mid lane, Doom is jungling the enemy's jungle, and I guess he was just looking for stacks, basically. Hmm. Uh, yeah, try and find some good creeps, maybe like a Rock Boulder or something. If they want to try and gank mid. Not the easiest hero to kill, though. And the pings come out. I mean, honestly, though, look at the farm rates. Like, Radiant is so far ahead in terms of CS, and it's, it's starting to really make a difference already in terms of net worth. They are going to try and wrap around here and see if they can potentially catch on to Van. They get the stun, and that's going to end up being a kill. Oh, Fairy Fire! Actually able to get away from that one for the moment, and Body Blocks now onto Franz trying to find the kill. Isn't going to be able to get it as the Death Pulse keeps him alive. That was pretty close, though. That would have been such a sick kill. If he managed, like he knew he was gonna die no matter what, so he tries to go for the body block play. Damn, that was good. Hmm. Well, again, you've got Iwo who's been playing this fairly effectively and is continuing to try and trade hits. I mean, he's fairly far ahead of. You take a look on the the enemy side, the Necrophos here, who really hasn't been able to um, get it quite as much as that Axe has. It's sort of been the somewhat constant pressure that Van's been able to exert and denying out a couple of these creeps from time to time. Yeah, meanwhile you have an Iron Talon, Timbersaw, generally a sign the game's not going too well, but he's not the worst, I guess, with reactive armor. It's kind of... It's, man, this is kind of hilarious. I hadn't imagined this as being a possibility for Timbersaw, but it works out. And keep his farm up to decent levels, but not going to be as high as he'd like it, of course. Needing that very early blood zone, just keep, you feel so useless without it. Like, yeah, maybe you can make a rotation with, like, Arcanes and your Soul Ring, but right. hard game. Definitely. Well, we'll see where they end up going to next. As far as levels are concerned, you're also seeing that the Radiant are somewhat ahead. Uh, the most important of those ones being that the... The Nature's Prophet's been able to get a quick level 5 and should be able to have pretty s quick level 6. So maybe a rotation around to try and kill the Timber Saw and then afterwards take the tower. Uh, do you think that might be in the cards here in the nearest future? Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, try and get him nice and early on. Maybe uh, the Ward's top lane. Oh, That's good, just to stop him. Nicely done. Well, yep, he does end up going down there. So they're able to find the kill. Again, Van a little bit too far forward. Tends to be played in that... Uh, on the mid roll and having to be relegated to the off lane as they've had Smash take over on the DP. Yeah, but to uh, further your point, I think 
getting a little bit of vision. Like maybe they're not expecting the fact that MGW is doing this, but at this point they've seen the Iron Talent and the fact that he's keeping up decent levels. I wouldn't mind seeing these two supports rotate and actually block that off, just because they're not really needed with Evo right now. Yeah. Um, oh, and this is perfect. Like we talked about all the other things that um, the Beastmaster with the AA was very common, but as well some sort of a core that can go in the jungle is very crucial. Like Liquid, they were the only team that. I would say felt comfortable picking the AA in the first phase, and it's one of the reasons why they were able to actually take out the full tournament. And it's because they always picked something that can go in the jungle. Of course, the Matumba Man Lycan was the big one, yeah. but the Axe does just as well for Ewell, and that allows this early farm in the early level 6 that's so crucial for this hero. Yeah, they're going to end up running back right into them, and this should be another quick and easy kill as they're going to end up trying to TP in. This is rather bold. Franz is going to get jumped on top of with the Haster in there. They are not freaking afraid of this, and he's taking a lot of damage. They also have the cask. Is it going to be enough? No, they're able to survive through it. Smash ends up falling, but I think that this is going to be the swan song for Sand King. He drops down as well. Three dead in the mid lane, and it looks like they might even be able to a blink dagger. press this down. Yeah, this is, this is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Blink Dagger Axe at 7 minutes in and a tier 1 tower soon to fall. Oh, that's a little bit scary. Did they see that TP? No, they didn't actually. And the second one coming through to back away. The whole okay. Time, AA, get in farm. He's almost got his level 6. Like, that whole rotation, it, it just means that this H apparition, as you were saying, is going to be able to get those levels that he needs. Like, they don't even need the Tome of Experience as of yet. No, and this is the uh, scenario where you can definitely go right into that Midas, too. It is opening up for MJW, though. Top lane. Down. They say he's getting jumped on. He might end up going down in a second. Can they get the chop? Oh, they don't quite catch him. They're going to try and go with the Sprout, but end up blocking him off. Oh, that was a kill that they want to take back if they can. Oh, man. If he YOLO blinked, he actually would have caught him. But Beast just slips himself away. Ooh, Bottom no lane. Infernal Blade. Well, there's the, the Hex. Oh, he's the got stun. no mana left. <laughs> He's trying the sneaky jukes. No, not quite there, unfortunately. They do also catch here on Osuko. He needs to get out of here. Uh, does not quite have that level 6 either, so he's just going to see how long he can stay alive. It's not going to be that long, though, and he gets taken down. So the dive going back the other direction ends up paying off for FDL. They're doing a pretty great job of it as well. Well, considering how scary that is when you lose three heroes under your tier two, that's like one of those, oh shit, is this game over? Like, we <laughs> we just lost everything. So, bouncing right back, very important for them right now. And again, it, it sounds like a, a broken record, but you just can't harp on how important this Bloodstone is for MJW. And now he's moving into the Arcane Boots already, so see if he can contribute to maybe a little bit of D-push in the mid. I mean, and it, it's so difficult to even make that happen right now. He's got no mana, basically, so having to go back to base, potentially. They are going to try and see if they can disengage from this. Doom is going to be able to spot out Dan. They're looking for the catch, and they end up popping the Exorcism, thinking about reinitiating. That's actually an Invis Smash, going to run him down. Ancient Apparition Blast is not going to connect, unfortunately, so a little bit of a wasted ulti. Uh, maybe not? Question mark? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's the thing, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I guess that they just find a kill. That's fine. And top lane, I mean, position one, AA. Masoku's still doing his thing, controlling all the safe lanes. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Slip himself away here, though. Well, I mean, bottom the, lane. Actually, I mean, they got to be careful right here because they're bringing over the rest of their heroes. Masoku does have oh, level CC6 one of TP. Up. This Timber has CP and Franz does too, though. This is going to be a jump. They, this is going to be a quick and easy kill, I think. And the A blast comes through. He is going to drop. Yeah. Mm. Quick cancel TPs, man. You see that? That is a tower. Yeah. That is like, let us go. Because they are not contesting and they're in no position to punish right now in FDL. Yeah. And I think that's why they were thinking about trying to TP quickly, but. As soon as they saw the rest of that come out, they, they just don't have any real great response. Like, they can't even go in and try and secure Roshan, or even moving into their jungle is scary at this point, as Sand King is going to end up getting spotted out here. They've got Van in the area actually doing a little bit of body blocking. There's going to be the catch, and this should be the kill as well, as the right clicks come through and a secondary Spirit Siphon. He falls. Elite Wolves are just all over FDL right now. They know exactly what they need to do. Oh, Trance? I was wondering if they were going to deny the Tranquil Boots. <laughs> just, uh, just troll them? Yeah. What about uh, Smash's Yules is almost done. Bloodstone Watch. 
seven hundred some gold. MGW is just like not even taking the risk of joining these fights. Doesn't want to slow down his uh, progression, even though it's rather mild. It's it seems a bit too risky. Like if you can't guarantee you're gonna show up and get a double kill, basically, it's not really worth it for a timber saw. Mm. Yeah, it's it's such a difficult situation to be in. Like, if you get up to that level where your bloodstone is done, then you're in a great spot. But right now, he's just so poor. Um, fifth lowest on the net worth, and more importantly, there's not a great way for him to get back into it either. Oh, top lane? They're going to TP in again. Catching Bisa. They've got the A blast. That's going to connect. That's a good way to hold somebody in position. And now they're also chasing again here towards Van Franz. Seeing if you can find him. There's the Doom already dropped in. The Witch Doctor ultimate too. Oh, they actually end up losing vision? Maybe? Possibly? Can Looking I get the deny? No, no, not quite. Uh, they found Iwa though. Oh, this is perfect for MJW. Shut that was this one. pretty good. He ends up going down. Necro finds the kill. That was a really awkward engagement from E-Wolves. You saw them actually uh, scanning as well. Yeah. They were trying to figure out what was happening. Like, where are the heroes? Are they camping? I think they thought that they were camping the timber bottom. I believe they scanned down here in their own jungle. Because they get another kill mid. Yeah. Smash is pretty far forward here and is doing as much as he can. Line in the area. Actually, oh, Earth Spikes. Are you kidding oh, me? Lisa right. goes down. Three are dead. They lose their axe, but pretty well worth it. Yeah, Stand King hard. also. They just never stop. Can they get it? There's going to be the catch, and a couple more ghosts fly through. DP finds the kill. Ultra 12 minutes. Look at all the pings. Oh, they're rather upset right now. Uh-oh. Oh no. Oh, he's only a 7k net worth. How, what did he gain? 1200 gold? Oh, thank you. Thank you for the BKB. Thank you oh, very much, guys. Man. That's just lovely. Oh, damn. Yeah, that was that was not what needed to happen. And unfortunately, it seemed like maybe a little bit of miscommunication. Not everybody either didn't have TPs or weren't capable of showing up to that fight. But whatever the case was, it's hurting now. What is this Nature's Profit building, by the way? I guess that's uh, the orchid. That's okay, I get confused yeah. as that changed the the uh, the veil build always messes with me now. Right, same. But, uh, yeah, it should be orchid Dota. That's gonna be good against the Necrophos. He doesn't really build anything to deal with it that early on. Okay. Timber too, actually. Like you're gonna finally get a Bloodstone. He's just gonna get orchided. Oh jeez. Like, damn it. <laughs> Mid lane again. CC. He just drops. Nothing doing. Sand King caught out as well. There's going to be the Hex as well as the call, and he drops. Wicked six streak. Oh, man. Elite Wolves are just, they are taking control of this game and not looking back. They're doing a great job. Oh, man. One at a time. Bottom lane. Uh, MGW not soon, guys. I got this. Don't you worry. Oh, we're going to have a Bloodstone. It's going to be great. He might have to go for something like a Yules or a Blink or some way to get himself into these fights and, you know, do something earlier. Might not have a game to go back to. Uh-oh. All right. Good stuff. I got I to gotta do my dual duty now and, and make sure that I'm keeping track of pause time. All right. We're good to go. <laughs> well, okay. Where are we at right now? We've got Necrophos. He had to go back for a Bracer after picking up the Drum of Endurance and a Null Tally. It's just like all stats and survivability at this point. Um, what other items do we have that are coming up for any of these heroes? Like M-God's got a Blink Dagger. You've got Axe, who hasn't really accelerated that far in terms of his farm. Is he going for a Vanguard now that he's finished off the uh, the Vit Booster? Uh, I've seen it in a couple ways. I've seen some casual Vit Boosters on Axe, which is a little bit unusual. But... Uh... I would guess. Well, I guess he would have just bought it by now if he won the Vanguard, so I guess this will just be casual for now. Maybe eventually he might think about turning into like the Abyssal or the uh, Crimson Guard if he won it, like the game goes later. But for now, like a four staff's probably more valuable just to keep his positioning up, try and get the heroes they always want called up. Okay. Yeah, they're uh Well I, I that's something that I always wondered about too, is like the difference between the safe lane axe and the the sort of more carry oriented axe. I guess it doesn't really matter all that much, but um, it's something to like. You're, yeah. you're still going to be fulfilling the same role, basically. It's all about like reading your specific game. Um, to, to me, I think the four staff seems more valuable this game. Other games, you'll see like a Shiva's Guard even come out relatively early because it syncs up pretty well with what you're always trying to get done, and maybe you're against pretty heavy physical damage. He might just need a BKB next as well if he felt. I, I feel like. 
four staff BKBs his current progression, and then he could go back for something out of the VIP booster. Hmm. Okay. Well, TP is back. They're they're hoping for a response right now. Franz is there. They know they need to be able to find a kill here. And the blink from Doom could be enough to secure this. They're going to jump for it. MJW a little far away. Can they find this, though? Oh, God. He jukes the other direction. And they might be able to get out of no. here. The Earth Spike no. on it, too. The A Blast is going to come through. I think that Van might be okay through oh, this. Living. They end up being able to find one. But, my God, Necrophos goes down at the same time. They're out of mana. Oh, wow. That was not what needed to happen. Yeah, M, M God, rightfully earning his name. The transformation is complete. He has ascended. What a what a great play right there. I mean, and honestly, <laughs> just so juke the other too. direction. That was... Uh. <laughs> yeah, the, the jukes were sick, too, from Van. I mean, all around, just doing a great job. Um, and you saw there the, the just quick rotations that have come about over and over again. Maybe looking for the Dragon Knight now. Are they going to be able to find it? The A-Blast comes through. It is going to barely oh connect God. on the egg. And that's going to end up being another yeah. shatter. I mean, he was dead anyway, I suppose. But that was just like pixels right there. He's, he's even building into the armlet still. He's like, nah, he'll miss, I'm sure. Eventually. <laughs> one of these times. For some reason, I thought you were talking about the Ancient Apparition. And I was very confused for a moment, but... Okay, Franz jumps into the trees. It's all good. It's all good things that are happening. We're fine. Again, it's such a difficult game to be playing against. Like, you've lost all semblance of map control, and you even have right now the Elite Wolves who, you know, they've placed down these Sentry Wards where they thought that Wards were going to be, and now they're going to be able to get that D Ward that happens as soon as they step back up here again. The Jump Ford are going to be able to catch on Awo. This could be what they need to be able to turn this one back around. Death Ward ends up dropping, trying to find him. Chakram just barely on the edge, and this might be enough to turn it back around. Necrophos finds a kill on the Axe, and that's 60 seconds without him. they got to make something happen here. And you can see, you know, he actually did go back despite having like 1,500 gold. He was finally like, oh, I guess I'll go back and finish off my uh, my Vanguard here. So purchases that one up, and then he's heading into the Blade Mill, which I'd totally forgotten about, which makes a lot more sense when you have an Orchid coming up from your Nature's Prophet. Yeah. Uh, you will be needing a little bit more of damage output. So that's going to be great up against the Necrophos and the Timber Saw, especially the Timber Saw. Yeah, it's going to be a really great item pickup for him. I mean, again, being able to have that Vanguard... Uh, Early means that you're a little bit more survivable against the damage. Like, basically, at this stage, Dragonite does nothing. He's got treads right here at 16 minutes, 17 minutes into the game. He's really, really poor. And because of that, they just don't have to worry at all about the damage that's coming in. They're also going to be able to get this D ward with the, uh, the DP illusion. So, very frustrating indeed that whatever small bits of vision uh, FDL did manage to have previously, it's all gone now. And Dyer's going to use the scan to see if they could find somebody, but there's nobody there. Under yeah, they're already gone. They've moved on out. And are they going to do a smoke of their own? They might end up running into each other. They have one on the line. And they will. Baiting out Smash, hoping he's under reward here, I'd say. But they have some detection already. Oh, Franz. Okay, blink forward. There's the BKB. It's been popped for Smash. I mean, he's not going to end up getting jumped there. They are going to be able to kill off M God. So that's another one going their way. Doom is going to be halfway through its duration now, and if they want to, they could think about jumping back in and uh, reinitiating. This. this could be really the bad for them. Gonna There's here. going to be the jump, maybe looking. They've got the increased move speed. There's the drum charge. They don't actually hit onto the call, though, but the A Blast is going to come through and connect onto several. Debuff applied as well onto the Timber Saw, and suddenly an explosion of anger comes out, and that's going to be Stanking going down. Godlike Street again for Smash. 10 and 1 on this DP, and he's doing it well. This is so devastating. Have, yeah, I have no idea why they chased that. Like, that's pretty much the dream. This is, like, why you bought a BKB. Like, yeah, you can get Doom through it, but you're still magic immune. So they can't follow up with the Doom. They basically wasted Doom. You get away from the fight. They don't kill Smash with, like, just pure right clicks or anything. You lose just your Lion. I, I don't know how they thought they weren't going to come here to turn that around. Oh, God, man. Orchid. Couple right clicks. He's just playing with them right now. Might be able to even find this kill. That was the soul burn that came out, and the A blast is going to go through, but it looks like it's not going to be able to hit as they weren't able to control him for long enough. M God drops the ward, spotting him out. There's the TP away. God. They're out. <laughs> that was so close. I the do. Build's complete. Be so dagging. I, I do like the Doom build, though, going for this blink uh, centaur stomp. It's the other way of initiation. We haven't seen it played all that often, but you know the the 
two second stun, basically having a, a really great form of initiation and team fight ability. Uh, it's something that that is pretty cool. Yeah, if you can doom up the uh, death prophet, if we, as we've seen, uh, even if you don't uh, get it through, like she gets the BKB off, it's still fine. She can't ult. Can't tell you wreck your team. Maybe you can fight, win that, and get out before she's up and active, and Smash just runs you over. Mm -hmm. and we do finally see that Midas come out here. Kind of kind of late, but it should still be enough to propel Masoko a little bit higher. I, I'm also looking at this right now, and I, I love the ward from the uh, from the Radiant here, being able to spot everything oh, with the yeah. secret shop. Um, Lion's just been keeping an eye on the all of the action that's been coming through. Again, another little A blast is going to fly onto the bottom lane. Except has no movement items. Oh, there's the stun. There's the Dagon. Nice. Yeah. That was a good bait. That was really good. And they knew the line was going to blink forward and try and set up for that too for the uh, Nature's Prophet and the Axe. Yeah. And now they're going to smoke up, hoping that there were more heroes that actually came and going to try and go into Evo. But knowing that those two are there, it's kind of surprised that they... Man, like they're still smoking here. You think they might actually try and come mid or up top or something? We'll see. Again, it's uh, MJW right here who's almost built into that bloodstone. Um, he's, he's so close at this point. Oh my god, I totally forgot yeah. actually. He didn't even go back for anything. Yeah, it's, it's been a rough game. There's no he's question about once. it. I know, it's that's like the thing. AFK, dude. And you look at this Smash is already starting to take down the tier 3 tower in the top lane. Like, there is not a great answer to this right now, is the, the tier 3 is going to drop. They've got the DD on DP, but the bigger thing is that they're going to be able to spot a couple heroes that are moving in. There's going to be the call forward trying to catch on to one. MJW is going to end up being the one that goes down. He ends up shattering, and unfortunately, oh god, that really hurts. You, you hate to see that. Oh, he was so close to Bloodstone. <laughs> it's a damn shame, ain't it? <laughs> Uh, exorcism's down, that means Roshan, uh, they can just take a rush of that, who cares. I'd say that would probably be a, a nice little target for them, that last tower as well. Could be knocked down by E-Wolves, open it up a little bit more. Can they really contest Rosh? I mean, like, honestly, within the Bloodstone, you get, like, what, six spells or something out of Timber? Yeah, he, he's, he's not really capable of doing a whole lot. Um, I, I do kind of, I'm curious as well, as far as this Nature's Prophet, like, He's gone for this build where you're just capable of picking people off, kind of, and as this game goes on longer and longer, like, he can probably come close to soloing the Necro, uh, if Necro happens to be alone for too long. Like, all of these items for, for Elite Wolves are just so built around being able to have the single target pickoff potential if they try and rat, and also have a great teamfight presence. I like this too. They're just slowly moving as a unit from E-Wolves. Uh, try not to allow any pickoffs. They know there's a Blink Doom. And he smokes up. They just purchased one, actually. So, looks like they are grouping up here. Right inside Vision. Nothing too deep. Again, the Secret Shop ward, though. It's just handy stuff. the Roche Pit. Oh, did they? Yeah, Dyer did. Hmm. Oh, nice scan. They actually just sniped that. Jeez. Wow. That was nice. <clears throat> So they know that they were getting ready to defend. And they should know that that's going to lead in some sort of a smoke play if they don't see, like, multiple heroes come out. God, this is... They're really well prepared. Um, it feels like in this last game, after the, the initial start that kind of went their way, Elite Wolves have just sort of ran away with it. You know, 12k net worth lead with 10,000 experience, and you s said it earlier oh, oh, that... Oh, does the illusion work? Oh, God. Uh, that hurts. That was everything. I mean, they didn't pop the Necro they ulti. Doom. I mean, just be happy they didn't Doom. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's, but they revealed the full smoke. But I mean, once the Doom blinks on you, you know they were all there anyway. So yeah. not too much of a, a difference. Well, Iwo spots it out. And now you've got the DP Octarine core. So guess what? That cooldown drops down to a uh, nice 108 seconds. Still fairly long, but capable of taking it. They did also pop the Dragonite ulti. They're going to TP in Van. They spot him, jump forward, are going to be able to catch. Also going to be able to find the Orchid onto CC. He's in so much trouble right now, and they're going to try and TP away, but the Earth Spike from afar, that's going to be another catch, another kill. Oh my god. Elite Wolves are just all over it. They know exactly what's happening.
Mop packs. What do they you They don't do care now? both, Roche. Uh, you know, I'm just talking into Dota TV and not to you. It's all good. Don't worry about yeah, it. Uh, that's, just, that's just me. Don't worry. <laughs> you guys are welcome. There's some secret knowledge. I didn't want to, like, blow your mind or anything. Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as they, uh... Yeah, I thought they might go right for the tower, but... I'm just gonna end the Roche. This is the safer play. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. This isn't something that you always end up seeing from American Dota, is people going for the Roshan first. Particularly with the DP ulti, like... It, it's on such a low cooldown at this point that they're going to be able to go in with a really quick one and then take down the tier 2 tower. And obviously there's no way that FDL were going to be able to stop that. The, the good news though is Timber Saws is Bloodstone. So like, we're good to go now. All 12 charges, man. The Dirty Dozen. Well, let me see some work here, MJW. Do your I, thing. I mean, realistically, it's, it's a lot of damage that comes out. So if they're capable of hitting like a nice Dragonite stun and find a couple with the Chakram going through and the follow-up there, it can be really effective, and maybe suddenly you get a bunch more bloodstone charges, and you bring it on back. Realistically, he like just entered the game. Yeah, like MGW hasn't actually been a hero yet. So, what do they have? We haven't really talked about like the uh, so. <laughs> in a time that his bloodstone took to get completed here, we now have a orchid. It's gonna be up against him. We have a blinking lion who also has a gem, which is pretty handy for him going around the map. You have the ancient apparition alt, and he. What are you building? That is—is um, is that a lotus orb? I think that's going to be a lotus orb. I was wondering if it was going to be a refresher. Bro. Okay, lotus orb, pretty good. I like it. That's, that's kind of kind of dope. All right, I can dig that. Uh, what else do they have? They have the uh, the axe, of course, who has his blink as well as his blade mail, and you're just getting your I'm now a hero item. Mm -hmm. So MJW, he needs that dream fight where you get like three kills, or at least you get some sort of a wipe, maybe. Evils overextend, and he just suddenly has 17 bloodstone charges. He can go and he can farm up that BKB using it. Yeah. Already, like the 18 mana regen, it's amazing as Timber saw how much it increases your GPM once you finally have this damn item. Yeah, it really is. And it looks like the tier 3 or tier 2 tower is going to go down. Now we're waiting for the next one to go down as well. They're just going to play it safe, though. Again, like, there's no reason to try and pressure this when they don't need to. And this is something that we hadn't seen in the earlier games today, was teams that were making sure, all right, the creep waves are fully pushed out. Now we're going to back out. We're going to try and pressure it again along the top side. So maybe Franz is going to be able to find some form of initiation here. Like, you need to be a little bit careful if you're Smash. But, oh, this is actually a little bit scary. If they're able to get the Doom off. Smash uh, looking. Now. Oh, BKB, there's the Doom. He actually got his ulti off. They're going to chase. Oh my god, they were ready the whole time. Franz is in so much trouble. Maybe going to be able to turn this one back around. Van ends up dropping, but that's just the Aegis. Rest of the team trying to show up. See if they can get into this one. The Exorcism is still going. The oh, A-Blast has already dropped. A ton of damage coming out from that Mjolnir. They're going to be able to completely dismantle them. Franz falls, and it looks like CC is going to drop relatively shortly as well. There's a ton of sucking going on all over the place here. Come on, <laughs> All you. fallen and be the oh hero my I know god! You can be. He's got the bloodstone. <laughs> run! <laughs> I can't die. Oh no, he's actually losing a lot of mana right now. There's going to be the earth spike and the mana drain. He's no longer silenced, but now hexed, and they're actually they're just going to leave him alone for the moment. M God is the only one that was chasing. Where did this, where's his team? How did that happen? It's That's the gem. They just like pushed. He he left the gem on the ground. I guess I don't know what's going on. I have no idea. Well, right. <laughs> easy. Lion shouldn't have died there. <laughs> oh, God. Ags on the axe. What do you think about that? That's a fun one. I like it. Relatively like low HP pools. There's no one who's mega tanky. I mean, <laughs> the Dragonite. Okay, with Armlet, he's at 1800. I don't know if he's uh, willing to turn that thing on, but like other than that, no one's really too crazy. Who's even the tank is? It's probably the Timber. Yeah, he's approaching 2K. So now with that Agnims at level three, it's going to be 400. Oh my God! Oh wait, actually, it's uh, it's 550 with seven. Well, they're they're going to test her right now to see if they can make it happen. And they're oh, we didn't quite get it. Missed the dunk. It's down on a low cooldown though. He could reinitiate if he wants to. No, not going to do it. BKB's already been popped top lane, though. They're going to chase now after Van, looking to see if they can find a kill. He needs to be able to do this. He's going to try and TP away, dropping very low, and no, he ends up going down. They find the kill in the end there. 1,100 gold going the direction of Doom. That being said, they still got problems down bottom where Iwo and Smash are hitting away at this tower, and they have very little fear 
of anything that's going to be going their way. They actually end up breaking the call and end up being a little bit of trouble. They also are able to break the yeah, Witch Doctor ulti, doomed on a Shash, and it will try to find his way out of there. They're not going to be able to find that kill. Smash is still regening free because of the Octarine Core. They get the A Blast onto several as well. He's trying to run away from there, but he's going to end up dropping. Meanwhile, they need to turn off that armlet on the Dragonite before things go awry. The team fight went kind of terribly for Elite Wolves. There's a lot of gold that's going to go back the direction of FDL. Yeah, I mean, Mist goes actually the man, though. M God himself. Oh, he's going back in. Evil, because he's, he lived. M God oh, gave me life. Pretty I low. Give you death. This, he's going to be able to dunk him if he can get it between the armlet oh, toggles. To use the fog. He's, he's looking. There's going to be the call. They're dropping low below the threshold. He needs to hit it. There's the dunk. And Axe finds the kill. Yeah, indeed. Oh, okay. So he should have been dead. But yeah. as that fight's going off, M God, full HP lion, blinks into the, like, the racks, essentially, <laughs> goes with the Earth Spike onto Bisa, and then hexes up the alting Witch Doctor. Like, what a player. You can't disjoint those. Pretty okay, good. dang it, that works. That's uh, the point. I missed that one at the end there. They're going to try and see if they can find a kill on the bees. He's going to drop. Unfortunately, the Necrophos is pretty poor. He's starting to catch up now again, but this has not been the cleanest of executions that we've seen in the past couple minutes here. Yeah, they. I think they feel like they have that insurmountable lead where it's almost a, a definite possibility at this point, but it's true. They didn't get, like, it all started because they lost that Aegis right away. They never had that chance to actually organize around it and prep this really nice push. And so we, we've kind of got into this, like, chaotic uh, little bit of around-the-map feel, and that's great for the side of FDL. Like, MJW, 14 Bloodstone charges. He has farmed amazingly well with his Bloodstone now. BKB, 1,400 gold. He's got himself buyback in 15. We talked about it. It's what he needed to get, and he got there already. We'll see if he's going to be able to translate that into more, but, like, I don't know. This is this is kind of a difficult position for them to be in still. They've still got the sort of semi-four cores with the Necro, Doom, Dragon Knight, uh, as well as that, that, uh, that Timber Slaw, but Ancient Apparition is definitely becoming a player now with that Lotus Orb. Like, he's providing a good amount to that as well, so if Necro accidentally ultis himself, uh, this could rapidly turn really bad for them. Or Doom, too. I mean, they've got both of those. Yeah. Uh, who who do they Doom here? Because you have two things to worry about um, between your Doom and then the Reaper's Scythe is that Lotus Orb. Very scary. I think either way, if you get either of those onto either Doom or Necro, then you're going to feel pretty comfortable. I mean, there's also the whole idea of, you know, trying to... is Can they take anything off with it? Uh, you can take Dragonite stun off, right? With the Lotus Orb, uh, it's uh, I get confused because the Aphotic Shield. I don't think it turns off spells. It uh, oh, it God. takes off buffs. Or sorry, stuns don't get. Smash debuffed. is very deep. He's gonna try and take down CC here, and they end up forcing the BKB off on MJW. They doom Smash and also gonna Reaper sight them, but he's still surviving through this. It doesn't matter. In the end, he ends up going down. Now they might have overextended slightly. They lose Smash very rapidly and. Go MJW. Are they actually going to be able to do this? FDL are turning it around. They're winning these team fights. Yeah, they're just. Uh, I don't know. Like you don't have this big open map that they've been preying on. Oh, they're coming back on the smoke. This is what they want. They want fights out here. This is where they shine. Oh, they're going to go onto the Witch Doctor right from the start. That's going to be a very dead hero. Getting the movement speed bonus. Thinking about going on to Bisa. Instead, they're going to chase over to the side here. Able to get the control for the moment. Doing a lot of damage. And they're seeing if they can find this. Oh, they missed the dunk on the Dragon Knight. It looks like he's going to be able to survive through it. Armlet toggling away. Uh, they feed away the second highest net with hero. Again, just a lot of gold going back the direction of FDL. And they're going to try and hit here with the A Blast. It's actually going to not connect. CC realizing what was coming his way, and he dodges it. Yeah, I don't think I've ever actually seen... Like, these fights, the way they're turning out here. Look at the lead. It's like 15k. Uh, maybe they'll get Bisa, though. Okay, yeah, that, that'll do. That's one way to do her. <laughs> but it's understand. shocking how much value they're getting out right now from FDL. Yeah, I mean, you look at it like... The Witch Doctor just got a Glimmer Cape simply from finding that kill a little while ago, even though he ended up getting killed off. So now you've got like this great item in terms of being able to deny out damage that comes from the Ancient Apparition. You can also maybe try and save a carry. Like I was thinking if he was going to go back for an Ags, but he's not nearly uh, close enough to that as of yet. But still, like they're they're letting them get back into this, and you can't. 
against a lineup that has this many cores, I don't think you can do that against FDL. All of their heroes skill so well. They gotta right the ship. <laughs> I'd say so. We, we haven't seen, like... What's the way you imagine this? It's like Lotus Orb, Death Prophet. She's sitting up front, right? She's attacking buildings. You don't have the option of the Doom initiation. You don't have the option of the Scythe. You don't, you don't really have any initiation because she's Lotus Orb. Like, that, right. That's kind of the dream right there, right? And then if you try and make any sort of a maneuver where you are just coming in with like movements and uh, some spells that aren't like far away Doom and everything, that's when Evo's supposed to be uh, counter-initiating. The Ice Blast has to be coming in. It's a lot harder for them to always guarantee the Ice Blast as well when it's in the push. It's so much easier when it's like these ganking scenarios where he's like hiding behind some trees and you're just calling. Ooh. And this is a great rap again. Man, FTL, they are just getting the movements right now. They're on it. They know exactly where well, they need to go. They're going to jump around, able to get it off, but they already got the DP ulti. And now the comp toward the MJW is not doing near enough damage. Masuku gets taken out now. And Smash is also starting to drop really low. They're going to be able to do a ton of damage here. Elite Wolves are all going down. They're going to be able to kill off Van and looking for another now. Now, look at MJW. He's got a billion and ten bloodstone charges. Who says the 21 minutes isn't a good timing? A five-man team wipe, and all they lost was that Necro. My God. It's time to push. Their positioning has been so fantastic from FDL and from E-Wolves that it's like they're in, like, bubble suits or something, and they, like, can't touch each other or, like, I don't know. They don't want to be in the same area. There's, like, two guys up here. Everyone's all around. We're not seeing this organized push that you're expecting when you see a lineup like this. With Nate, you know, maybe Nature's Prophet could be in another lane or something like that, and you've got some wave pushing here. There's nothing. It just looks so chaotic. And FDL, man, what a sick rap. Oh, that, that's good. It was so good. good. It was, it, DK did, like, almost 4,000 damage in that fight just by virtue of a couple of spells and his right clicks. And you're seeing now MJW trying to cut the creep wave because guess what? They still haven't taken the tier one tower top. Like they've been so far behind in terms of the objectives that they've been taking that they've got a ton of, of, of catch up to play, but that also means it's a lot of gold that's going to go into their pocket. You've got a 10,000 net worth right, net lead right now and around 5,000 experience, but the heroes from FDL just do so much more. Like the, the fact that Ancient Apparition is just now going back for his Aghanim Scepter, think about if he was getting this like I mean, how much gold is a lotus orb he probably would have had it by now oh yeah he definitely would have had it at this point uh i can understand the sentiment of using that lotus orb to try and get that organized push that we're talking about where it's going to be so helpful for the death prophet to actually go high ground but the problem is they never actually like got a chance to use it it seems yeah it's crazy to think that they don't have a rax but it's 36 minutes in and they had that lead for so long and in the uh, first game, when FDL won, when we talked about, like, they were behind and then Bisa got the Radiance, but it was all about those map movements, like taking down the towers, trading evenly, when it seemed impossible. And once again, it's the superior positioning that's doing it for FDL, like these crazy smoke plays where they're ganking in behind. Last time it was towers, but now it's these insane late game team fights. And it's one of those things that we said it before, but when you see a team doing these kind of decisions, it's so impressive and also, like, gives you a lot of hope for them, like, staying together and, like increasing their their skill sets i think in a lot of other ways just like building off of that good synergy and good teamwork and someone like making a lot of really good calls yeah they really are somebody whoever it is that's sort of giving them the coaching right now they're doing they're, they're earning their money's worth you've got witch doctor also who's halfway to his aghanim scepter they're going to jump forward and try and catch your on visa he is going to end up dropping finally but van is also here uh okay all right okay Crash on DK. Interesting. Interesting. All right, I'm, I'm keeping track of the pause timer again. <laughs> you I'm, got work I'm to do, it. I know. <laughs> it makes uh, sense, though. He, uh... Well, I guess they're both BKB'd, actually. Oh, wait, no, they're not. He was not. Because um, he ulted four seconds ago, but he didn't throw it a stun. So he must have crashed. There's, like, okay. no way that would have happened otherwise, right? Hmm... All right, well, looks like we're good to go. Game is going to restart again. They used about a minute of pause time, and looks like it's time to party. They're going to be able to get the stun onto Iwo and also have the Witch Doctor ultimate coming out. That's a lot of damage going their way. They're going to be able to find the kill. DP does manage to pick up the Aegis. And she has Refresher available, but they need to try and make their escape now. This could be a little bit of a scary si situation if they're not out of here in time. MJW? 
He's looking. They jump forward. They catch. Smash has actually popped his BKB and now gone into ulti form. They need to step away from this. Franz is going to be able to get out of there for the moment. Mgod trying to chase in it. Looks like at least for now, Stan King is going to end up getting dropped down by Van on the other side. They managed to find the kill only on the Witch Doctor. So They know MGW doesn't have a TP, though. But it looks like they'll let him go. Or, well, off cooldown, I should say. But there he goes. Hmm. They forced the BKB and the Refresher out of DP. So to me, that seems somewhat worth it here. Because they're not going to be able to push again for a little while, I don't think. If they do, then it's not going to be a, the greatest of fights for them. That push is going to be really scary, though. That is yeah. going to be the uh, the death one, it would seem. Like, all these other uh, defenses have been incredible. Really great movement as well. But you're now dealing with Aegis, Refresher, Death Prophet. That, that's some scary stuff. So a minute and a half when that'll be back up and active plenty of time left of course as they've just taken the ages so they should be able to like properly organize but if you know history tells in these past couple of fights maybe fdl can pull one out perhaps they can get the doom on the death prophet just make it so smash can't pop that refresher can't get everything done focus everyone else down and then he's just the uh, lone one standing well one other thing to keep in mind here is that we do have one more smoke on fdl and if they're able to get this one somewhat effectively and able to take a fight outside of their base, they've got Shadow Blade on DK. This could be what they're looking for to try and, and turn it back around. Because if they, if they wait until Elite Wolves are at their base, that's where things go really awry. Um, also worth noting, we do have Necrophos with a Ghost Scepter. So going to be able to survive through that burst that comes out from the DP. And the Necro or the uh, Dagon level five as well, and now an AC up also on this Timber. They're going to be relatively tanky. Like it, it's true that this push is going to be hard for them to deal with, but I think that like you compare it to the position they were when the throws started to come around, they can actually hold this. I think. Still stuck at that same net worth. We'll see if FDL is going to be able to <sighs> use their... Uh, Just uh, doing my thing again. You know me. No problem. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the AC for MJW, that's an interesting one. Uh, just because it's so rare to see an item that's not uh, int related, uh, other than BKB for a Timber Saw, but your position one's a Necrophos. So he's not picking up an AC, and the physical damage coming out from E-Wolves is very real. So this is what we're looking at. Refresher, Lotus Orb. This is see, other where was side this? van. They're going for it. The van is going to be able to be split pushing on the other side. They need to be able to come and defend against this. And Bean is actually going to be the one that rotates. They actually force him back for the moment. They can jump in if they want. BKB's already gone. They're going on to Iwo. He's going to be the person that they decide to jump on. But Dagon going back into Bean's face. Smash is starting to fall low. The Doom is down on him. And that's the first Aegis. Can they find this kill? Ancient Apparition Ultimate comes through. They're going to see if they can kill her off and do it a ton of freaking damage. She doesn't have anything. They can't stop it. Van is actually going to be able to do a lot here. He takes down oh, one of the barracks. But I think that, I, I still think that this is somewhat okay for FDL. It's going to come close. They it's, lost two. Yeah. Two melee racks is really rough. And well, so finally, this is like literally exactly what we said. All right, Death Prophet on the high ground with a Lotus Orb and Nature's Prophet in the other lane punching towers. Yeah. With all these items now, it got a little bit risky. They were able to burst down the Axe and the Death Prophet now from the side of FDL, but looking so solid. Hmm. So what do you need? Oh, if they could just get like one more pick off here. Everyone has buyback on the Radiant, I'm going to assume. It does look that way. Except for the AA, but not a big concern. I like how aggressive they're being during this 40 seconds of downtime with the DP. If they could even knock down a tower, it would really help in case they do get a chance at a YOLO push. Van's got complete eyes all over them, though, and there's the jump forward. They're going to be able to get the Hex as well as that Finger of Death. And now, maybe seeing if they can kill him off. M God's going to be able to so. walk away. They're doing a lot of damage here, but not nearly enough. And Bisa still looking to see if he can find it. It looks like he's going to be able to walk away. They end up being able to kill off that lion, and MJW is controlled for the moment. He might have to suicide here. Pops the BKB, seeing if he can run away for the moment. And Masuko chasing it down, and they're going to be able to kill him off. The maledic damage is enough. They lost the Doom, but they got the lion in the AA. And as you mentioned, no buyback. Yeah, it was also the, the uh, gem on lion, and Doom did ping it out, so they should know it's there. Yeah, the courier will just grab him on the way back. All right, looks like they're wanting to push this a little bit more. Van is going to go for the courier snipe, ends up being able to get it. Really well done. That was actually Stan King's uh, two pieces of his ultimate. That would have been his Aghanim Scepter for the Witch Doctor. Oh, that hurts. 
Three minutes without that. I just realized that was the Radiant Courier. Oh, but Doom actually pinged out the gem going down. Damn. Okay. So, Radiant are able to pick up the gem. And then they That's end up nice. losing their courier. A little bit of sloppy play from both sides here towards the end. Oh, it, no, Radiant got the gem and then Dyer lost the courier. Right. Well, yeah, it, oh, I see what you're saying, yeah. Yeah. But. I mean, just the fact that, like, you, you end up being able to take down the both of the barracks up in the top lane, and then you get the rain, or the melee one over here, but you also lose a lot for it. I don't know. I, I'm not, I guess that they weren't able to take too many objectives off the back of it, so it, it didn't end up mattering. But I, I just worry about the potential that you're seeing. Like, MJW has 25 Bloodstone charges and 3,600 gold. If he wants to now, he could go into Aghanim Scepter, potentially, and just start, like, doing tremendous amounts of damage. Do you think that that's the play at this point? Like, give the gem to somebody else? Uh, at some point he has to, because he has to just transition into an even bigger item. Probably... I don't know. Can he go Shiva's? Yeah, probably Shiva's. Well... Maybe he can just go Aghanims, because his Bloodstone is so insane, and they do need more damage, I feel like. More burst. Like, hey, I'm actually like so down for Aghanims this game. I love Aghanims on, on Timbersoft. It, it's I, an insane amount of damage. Yeah, if you're capable of sustaining it, and I, I think that at this point he can. Like, They just need to be able to burst down that DP before she kills off like the Witch Doctor or whatever. And Witch Doctor is going to be able to start to do that damage, too. Like, You've got the AC now up on Timber. So you're also going to be able to get a damage amp from the uh, from the the death ward. It's level three, like it's pretty tremendous. Man, I just noticed that uh, CC's BKB is only eight seconds. He's been doing a really good job in these fights, despite the uh, AA blast, and obviously he's still going for the armlet build. Oh my Hasn't god! Has been dropping too much lately. We got a bloodthorn on deck. <laughs> Holy shit, everyone's buyback is gone. <laughs> Everybody, nobody wants to do anything besides fight. Nature's Prophet has his, and actually we did just get the Timbersaw finish off his as well. Um, but BKB on Axe, fresh 10 second one. What happened to the buybacks? What's going on? Why, why is my DP a buyback? Uh, she's building a Shiva's. Can you imagine if they killed Smash right now? That would be devastating. I, and they have the heroes for it. I mean, they have a Necro and a Oh, uh, Van? He's going in. All right, they're going to fight this. Van is going to end up going down, and Smash they may be going to be able to turn this around. Smash is dropping super low. He's going to end up popping. They don't have a buyback on him, and oh, God, this could be it. Oh, my God. I don't think that they realize that he doesn't have buyback, though. Like, I mean, how could you? Yeah. Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> FDL... With 70 seconds left, they didn't get the Necro ulti off, which is the one downside. Witch Doctor now is his Ags, too. All of the pieces are coming together for the, the comeback of the century. They were ahead by 20,000 net worth, and now it's down to just 5,000 with relative evenness in, in terms of experience. Like, they're going to jump forward looking for something, but look at how aggressive Elite Wolves are playing, even though DP doesn't have buyback. What are they doing? How are they this far forward? It's the... Uh... It's like the peacock with its feathers. It looks like a big scary thing, you know? When, when really, there's nothing really in there. Oh my god. Dragon Knight's going to be able to find him, too. They have a gem, don't they? Yeah, they do. Um, oh, yeah. They, they have a gem, CZ. All right, well, they're jumping into them. I'm going to bring them low. They end up bringing on MJW, doing a lot of damage, and going to try and TP away for the moment. They're going to chase, looking for the blink in just a second, able to catch there onto M God. He drops again 20 seconds before DP and Nature's Prophet are going to be back up. They are falling to pieces. It, it might actually cross over the threshold at this point. It's getting there. Like, what, what's our total lead now? <laughs> it's into the, like, 2,000 it, it's range. It's even. It's... I can't believe that this is the way this game has gone. They were looking so good for so long. They jump in again, are going to be able to catch on to Necrophos, but there's the Witch Doctor ulti. It's going to start to go onto the, the axe as well, and he's going to drop. They drop the AA ulti, and it's going to connect. That is going to be an Aghanim Scepter upgraded ultimate. But again, you've got the, the Glimmer Cape on this Witch Doctor, so I don't think he's going to die. Oh, God. That should be fine. Every wow. team fight. Oh, man, is he? Yeah, he's good. Every team fight feels like it's just going FDL's way. They only need to lose one to to lose the game, basically. Though, that's the the downside to this. Well, we saw game two where they put all their eggs into Van, and they're just like, "All right, go, man. I need you to carry this game. You have to be our tinker." 
And the same thing this game with MJW. They're just like, all right, we're gonna let you get a Bloodstone for like 20 minutes and not even play with our team. And he did it, man, he's never delivered. Uh, he was two deaths when he got this thing, he hasn't died yet. 29 charges, 40.8 mana regen, that's pretty good. Yep, that's all right. <laughs> Every... Now the five seconds of the Bloodstone though, or the uh, BKB. And I think that he actually, he has an ultimate orb that's coming out to him right now. Yeah, I so, think that's Scythe, probably? Yeah. yeah. Also, they've got the uh, the Aghanims on Necro, as well as the E-Blade and Dagon 5. This build by the Necrophos, like, what? I, I mean, we were looking at his build. He had gone drums into Bracer, into Null Tally, Dagon. He was so poor before, and now he's just barely behind the Death Prophet. Like, they've been able to team fight their way back into this. And this isn't something that you always see from NA Dota. I feel like more often than not, when you, you talk about this region, it's it's winning lanes hard and then just sort of stomping from there. But they've been able to come back into it through, like, communication, coordination, team fight. You talked about it, positioning. They've been doing such a spectacular job. Yeah, it really is one of those situations where one fight and it should just be over. It's a death profit with uh, refreshers. So you don't really have to worry Ooh. about exorcism not being up if you can find some Man. objectives top lane. Oh my god, he doesn't have Back buyback. Eggs. He bought it. That's 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 oh, potentially oh, oh, oh. it. If Your they're able to take this. Oh my god. All right. And honestly, they're going to have that stuff back up again in a little bit. They can take this fight. DP has ulti, has refresher, Aegis, but it's it's four on five now. Oh, can they get the counter pick though? Oh, they're looking. Seeing if they can find him. He turns, fights. M God, they actually ended up missing the call. Oh no, Iwo. I don't know what happened right there, but they were able to break it and now gonna chase after the axe a little bit further. And able to get the dragon tail. He's gonna drop. They're gonna lose another. Oh my god. Uh, 80 no seconds. That's, no that's <laughs> no necro. Oh my god, I can't even oh, handle it. That's done. That's just no way. FTL pulling a miracle one, a 20,000 net worth lead. We were all but calling them out, and they had the Aegis on DP. They had their ulti up. They ran in, got killed over and over again. Oh, oh my he's god. So finally buying that Agnes Scepter, too. Like, what an item, and what a time to buy it. It's like the first time he's had a really clutch scythe anyway, this whole game. And now, it's tier it's three it? is down. Barracks are dead. No buybacks. They're going to go for it. FDL are going to be able to pull one of the biggest comebacks I've seen in a really long time. And off the back of this 31 Bloodstone Timber Saw, we were giving him crap for so long all throughout the whole course of this game, and he threw it right back in our face. Very well played, MJW. My god. Oh, they're actually just going to leave it. They're going to keep playing safe. Uh, maybe they just can't guarantee the fact that Axe doesn't have buyback and they get called under towers, perhaps. That is a risk that you can't really afford. Like, there's a three-man call here or something. And into yeah. an uh, apparition ice blast, then you can definitely lose the game. But that is only going to really even out the rack score. I can't believe that this has really ended up happening in this way. And again, you, you like the the net worth doesn't really tell the tale here. They finally took down you know these two barracks, the the two up top, and then the one down in the bottom lane, and they just threw too much away at it. And now you got the sheep stick up on the timber saw. They're in a commanding lead. Not just in terms of items, but just position around the map. And sure, like, they, they don't have any vision right now. Elite Wolves, they've got it all shut down by that gem that got picked up earlier. Well. Ah, they're going for the uh, smoke again. One more pick, of course, with this... Uh, I mean, they just saw what happens with this Reaper's Scythe with the Agnum Scepter, so they're ready to do it again. I mean, uh, granted, very risky. They're all here. Oh. Uh, ice Blast is so hard to hit in these situations. This is really scary, too, because if either team loses this fight significantly, they're going to end up losing the entire game. Smash has been controlled. He didn't get his ulti off. He's doomed. He's dead. In just a second, they end up being able to take him down. Can he get it off as the Aegis is going to end up popping the second time through? They're actually doing a lot of damage. Able to kill off the Witch Doctor. No more of him this fight, but Smash trying to stay alive. He might be able to do it. Goes for the Refresher. Yule Scepter lifting him up into the air, and he's regen back up to full. Can Smash do it? He's fighting up against this Dragonite but not nearly tanky enough. MJW is here as well. And the Dagon from afar. They kill off the DP. Buyback again. What are they going to do, though? They don't have an answer. I don't think that they're going to be able to continue this. They're going to jump forward. Catches. Oh, wow. We're going to be you know, get the Echo uh, Shell off. And oh, oh no. nice Midas. But then he misses the ulti. 
Oh, but maybe gonna be able to kill him off. There's going to be the axe. Nice sheep keeping him alive. They're actually gonna be able to keep CC alive with this. Arma toggles away. Holy hell, the sheep stick coming in at the very last second from the timber saw. He's earned every one of those 37 charges. Holy hell. Yeah, MVP of this game, surely. MJW. I mean, the rest of the squad holding out for him as long as they could, but he has just turned on once he got that bloodstone. <laughs> that was kind of funny. He actually missed, like, he had bots too, and he hit the creep. That could have been a disaster if he wasn't so nearby, but it's okay. Oh. They saved CC. My god. So, go Ewo. Try and save this game. They're going to jump in. Catch there as well on Bisa. He's dropping low. Isn't quite dead as of yet, but there's going to be the axe dead as well. And now they're trying to finish off any last bit that they can. They're doing a lot of damage to Smash, and he's dead. The E-Blade came through at the end. GG gets called 150 seconds Unreal. on the sidelines. Unreal. And at the end of the day, look at the graph. Oh my god. FDL, talk about perseverance. Talk about stick to itness. They do a great job here. I mean, you can call it possibly mistakes from Evils, but the fact that FDL were able to capitalize on all those and the way they played this game tactically in terms of their positioning was just, it was like night and day after that, that lead. They were just like, oh, guys, we got to, you know, try and win this thing. You know, buy our bloodstone and there enough, they just look so solid. They never really, like, lost a fight that was ever going to cost them anything that... That first one that was so scary when they lost those two sets of racks, I thought that might be it, but you're so late in the game, you've got the heroes, try and keep that pushed out. Hats off to them, man. What a game. Well, great job. We are a little bit late right now into our next series, but it's well worth it because Elite Wolves, they played well but weren't able to stand it out at the end as FDL take that series, and they're going to move on. We're going to step into the next series of the day, which is going to be Freedom versus Enemy GG. Everybody stick around again. Your casters at Lyrical Dota, at Mop Packs. Follow us on Twitter if you feel so inclined. Make sure that you stick around because we got one more great series here to go in just a second.